all right everybody welcome to another amazing video in this video if you wanted to learn how you can import excel file into access via vba which is a visual basic by simply creating a form on your x not excel rather access database like the one you see here you someone can push a button and then they can open up a dialog box and then import it and everything will be done for that particular file and you could process it within a matter of a couple of seconds if that is something you are interested in or would like to include that in your microsoft access database project this video is right for you so let's just get right to the video and let's see how you could do that. So what I'll do is first, I'll walk you through what we're gonna do. So we have this very simple database. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, Joe asked me to create in which he wants to import an Excel file that has a data of people with the email. And he wants to know how many people are from one particular company based on the data that he gave me. So let's say this is the data, where is it? Uh, right here. All right, so this is the Excel file that he gave me. He wants, he doesn't want to do any calculation. He's like, hey, Mark, just create a database in which I will know how many people are from US, Canada, so on and so forth. So let's do that. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to go over here, click on this import button in which it will navigate to the folder in which my file is located. And then I'm gonna click on import. It's gonna say, hey, go to the next step, which will create the report. And then we're gonna click on this button. And then within a couple of seconds, without us doing any calculation whatsoever, Microsoft Access has created this simple yet most powerful that will organize the country by alphabetical order and then it will tell me how many people with the email address are there for this particular country so that's the project we're going to be working on so let's go ahead and see how it works and how you can incorporate that into your particular access project so Let's say if you want to create this particular form and how you could do that, right? So I'm going to go over here and under form. And by the way, in case you see Microsoft Access has this kind of panel, the navigation panel, so you open it up. And don't worry, if you like this, I will leave a link in the description for you. So that way you could take this access database and run it and then copy and code the, the paste the code from here into your project it makes it a little easier right and if you are also interested in learning more about microsoft access just drop me an email go to my website and ask me what is it that you would like to learn i will be creating a video for you to help you out so under the tables there's one desk table which is called raw data let's open it up and this is gets imported into Microsoft Access, which is the Excel file. So let me just walk you down to the step-by-step -step process. So I'm gonna put this in here, go to home, go to design view, and then look the look at the code behind scene. So what actually it does. So I'm gonna right-click over here on this button and then click on properties, and this will show up. And I always like to get it out of there. And then let's just go to events and then on click event. I'm gonna click on this and then on click event. There's this function that I created is called import Excel data, and which is the module, which is right over here. And you could double click on this, and then this is where most of the things happen. And when you run this it's gonna open up the dialog box and it's gonna show you which file, you can specify it, which file you want Microsoft Access to import. 
So in this case, I say only import Excel file. So let's walk through this code. And we'll just make it a little bigger here. So it fits the screen. And there's that. So first thing is this. This is going to open up the dialog. And by the way, there is a reference that you have to enable it in order for the file dialog box to work properly. So what do you do is go under tools and then references and then make sure this is enabled microsoft office 16 object library and i believe all the above will be automatically enabled and you could find that by scrolling down and you'll see it all you gotta do is just put a check box next to it and it will make it it will make it enabled and then after that you could use this file import dialogs box and it will work like magic for you all right so let's go so this is the it's pretty straightforward up until here so you can literally just copy and paste it you don't need to do anything about it and then where the magic happens is this so for example if you are including or importing more than one file you can set this to be true but i am only including or importing one file so i just want to set it equal to false and then this is just for aesthetics. It's not really going to make any difference. And I'll show you what that means. So for example, if I save it, open this up, and I click on import, nobody's going to care what this means. So this is like the dialogs box that you can personalize the title of it. Say, hey, please select one file. And then I just added my name in here, code with Mark, obviously, right? And then you could do that. But from an end user's point of view, it doesn't matter. So it's for just for me to a little bit thing. So that's that. So let's move on next. This is where you are going to absolutely love this video. Why? Because it's going to clear any filter, meaning you will know when <laughs> go through this, any filter that is already in the dialogs box. And then in order for the dialogs box to say only include Excel file, only include CSV file or database file, project file, or all file, you could just uncomment this and that's that. And any one of these are already preset in the past, meaning you opened it up and then you open it up the second time, this line of code will clear it out. So that's what I meant. It's going to clear this out for you all right and then if the dialog box shows and if the file is selected then it's going to run this code which will be select the path which is we have declared it up here as a string so it's going to get the path of that particular file and then it's going to run this sql uh, file which means if the file table, which is this, the T temp 01, this is my terminology of using Microsoft just so I can keep things organized in Microsoft Access. So this is my quote unquote structure. I always put T in front of the table and then Q in front of the uh, query. And you probably guessed that F in front of the form and R in front of the particular uh, reporting so that's that so what this does is if the file is already imported the first time the second time around i don't want to add to that particular file what does that mean so let's say if your excel file has 100 rows i don't want to add those 100 rows again so it's going to delete the old data by doing this but if you have a csv file you could do this too as well right so whatever the name of the table is, it's going to delete everything from the table by running this particular command. And then I am calling this function. It's called transfer spreadsheet. But if you want to do the CSV, you can say transfer text and then whatever particular table. In this case, it will be this that you want to import it. You can import it in there. And then I want to import it into this. And then when I'm done, I want to see the message that says go to the next step. And by the way, in case your user has 
clicked cancel, you could run the code over here to say, hey, user, you clicked cancel or whatever action that you want to perform. And then once this is done, I am saying call this function in here. And that is that. So while we are still here, there's another one called uh, run the report, which is this button. And basically what this does is this. It's going to run query one and two. And that's that. And then we have this button that says quit. And then this will do this. So since we're already here, might as well get that out of the way. All right. So let's go on to the access database side of things. So let's do it one more time. Click. Import. Go to the next step. Create it. And then boom. So let's see what happens when we run this query. So I'm going to put this in a design view. And nothing really happens. <laughs> Reason being is because when I create my access database, so whatever import data that I have, I would like to import it into a uh, another table. So I will just create another table by simply going here over here and renaming it to be 02 or 3 or whatever, right? So that way, in case for some reason, I'm going to close this out, this table gets deleted or no longer is there. I can still run the report by clicking on this. And then let's go to the next one. I'll put this in a design view. And in here, this is very simple. I'm just taking the name from here. So there's a name column email column, country column. So all I'm saying is this. Take the country, group by it, and count how many times does the name appear. I can always say email as well because it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, because it's going to be the same number of rows just to validate this. So we'll go over here. So we'll just say US. Why? Because I'm from US, New York, that's why. <laughs> All right, so let's go over here as well. And then I'll just go here, just show you, filter this particular entry name. So we have nine entries, and guess what? Our report also has nine entries as well. So this is you trying to validate, just to make sure that it works. And once we have this squared away, we're going to close this out, which is table. And we're gonna close this out, which is a t uh, curry. So we'll say, we'll say, don't save it. And then that is that. So we'll just click on the exit, and then we'll reopen it. And then we'll go up here. Let's just do it one more time. And let's go to desktop, current, this, done. And there you have it. Perfect, right? Simple, easy. And imagine if you have to do this manually how long it will take. But the point is now, now you know how to import an Excel file, CSV file, or any other type of file that you want via VBA in Microsoft Access. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that way you learn ways to finish your projects a lot faster. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.